Okay, so I'm pretty excited. I got some upgrades for the server here, which uh, includes some new Xeon processors. I got this nice uh, cryptograph from China on them. I don't know, they came from a US seller. I don't know why they have that on them, but instead of um, two of those with 16 cores and 32 threads, we'll have 20 cores and 40 threads. So that's a pretty good upgrade. Um, we'll also have to do some testing with the RAM and see if I can populate the last eight slots or not. And then on top of that, of course I got the old you know, 846 super micro case here, which is awesome. So on top of that, we've added a 10 gig card. Uh, this server board, which is a TN S7045 has four gigabit ports built in and an IPMI port built in, which I've actually been using um, to turn the system on and on with. I, I've had to use that because this is a super micro case that has one of those um, proprietary super micro uh, cables in it. And I got an adapter. So now I'll be able to turn it on and off with the switches on the front panel, which is nice. So we got a, a 10 gig uh, SFP plus dual SFP plus uh, card here. And then this is of course uh, the upgrade card. The motherboard actually has um, down here, you can see it's got SAS connectors, uh, but they're only three gigabits a second. And then of course it's got the regular um, SATA connectors, but uh, four of them are three gigabits a second. And then two of them are six gigabits a second, second which I'm using for my SSD um, cache drives over here, which are not that fast, which is the, um, so I have this, SAS expander card for the array, which is six gigabits a second, and I'm only using the four ports on it because I only have four drives. Um, but then uh, the other cool thing, you're not gonna be able to see it very well, but they make these other add-in cards, and if you can kind of see it there, it has an NVMe drive on it, that's two terabytes. Um, and uh, the card was only, the, the adapter card that goes in the PCI slot was only five bucks. Um, so I'll have to run some some tests on it and see how the throughput is. Um, but basically now this old server motherboard can have an NVMe drive, which is gonna be, uh, I, I mean, I don't even know how much faster, like hundreds of times faster than the SSDs that I'm using through the SATA ports. Because the SATA ports, these red cables are only six uh, gigabits a second or whatever throughput, and it doesn't even hit that because the overhead. So it'll be interesting to see uh, what the throughput is on this card. Um, the setup on the uh, the PCI slots in here is a little bit weird. Um, this is a, a, a eight slot card, but I think it is only by four, the socket is, and this is only a by four physical card. So I stuck it in there. Um, I do still have the two by 16 uh, physical and connected slots. And uh, the weird thing is, is one goes to CPU zero and the other one goes to CPU one and the same with some of these other slots. And I, I don't know the performance ramifications of that, um, but I may have to experiment with that once we, um, I, I don't have my uh, rack mount switch yet. It's still kind of a mess in here because I'm still using the old uh, TP-Link or whatever Netgear ghetto switch is there. See, look, I have all this extra RAM for the server that I can't use, which is hilarious. And I have like my old router and stuff in here, but um, I'm looking at getting, um, a, there'll be another video. I have a 1U uh, enterprise level switch that goes here. I'm not gonna bother with that, you know, Microtech or Unify crap. And then um, I, I haven't bought it yet, but I wanna get, they have another, um, a 1U server for the router instead of this, I don't know, this thing's a couple years old now, it's probably five or six years old. Uh, it's an Asus router or something. And I'll, I'll, I'll repurpose this, this Asus router as, as strictly speaking like an access point for Wi-Fi down here. Um, my SSD is Garage Meth Lab, which is, I'm sure the neighbors love, but uh, I'm not gonna use it as a router anymore. I have one, I have my even older one uh, on the third floor for uh, just a Wi-Fi access point up there. So a lot of these cables and stuff will get cleaned up once we move to that. And then, um, you know, I see a lot of guys spending like a couple hundred bucks on PDUs and stuff, but I went down to an office building and picked up this, I think it's 32, oh, well, it's 36U rack and, uh, for free. And it came with, uh, there's a PDU here for 240 volt. And there's another PDU back here, the same one, or, or it might be down lower. I think I put it, I think I put it down low. So I have one up high and one down low. And then you can kind of see the big thick gray cable back there. There's two of those. So um, basically you get 30 amps per PDU. And then in the top back there, 
uh, this this little thin thing here is another 240 volt uh, PDU that you could plug into one of these and then run smaller stuff off of like I don't know the switch or something but so I've got three PDUs in here that all came for free with this IBM 36U server rack so uh, you know um, th this did too this is a, a um, you pull it out and flip it up and it's an LCD screen so it's it's actually hooked up to this server so if I need to go into the BIOS or something I can just pull this out flip it up there's a screen there and then there's an IBM keyboard and uh, trackpad mouse thing so you can get right into the BIOS right you know because you know if you don't want to do the IPMI thing or whatever or if I'm down here for whatever reason I can just go right into the server with the monitor and keyboard here and it's it's a 1U solution which is pretty so it came with the server rack for free they just they were happy to get rid of it right and then under underneath the server there's a set of rails um, that don't have uh, like bearings or anything it's kind of like just a just a short shelf on each side so I could slide something that's 19 inches wide or whatever in there like if I got another server and it didn't come with the sliding rails this this server thank god came with the rails because this thing is super beef uh, but I before I got all the rails set up and for it and everything I actually had it sitting down there on the like shelf rail uh, the shelf and, and it was totally fine it just you can't pull it out and work on it which is annoying so I I did end up finally um you can see there's rails on the side here so uh, all that's uh pretty sweet I'm, I'm pretty happy with this i i'm also thinking of possibly um getting some of those 19 uh u or i mean 19 inch uh for you uh server cases that fit in here uh because i use the rx 6600 xt graphics cards which are really easy to cool and i could fit a whole bunch of i mean i've got plenty of space beneath the server there's nothing in the rack beneath the server i just have the server here because it goes with this monitor and this monitor and keyboard when you pull it out is the perfect height to type on so i figured i'd just put the server um right underneath it and uh you know if i if i end up uh in the future putting the mining rigs in here i'll have to get a kvm to switch between the mining rigs and the server and stuff to, so i only need one of these so i can just use this for all of them uh, but we'll see if that materializes. Right now, I'm working on this uh, Super Micro 846 um, server case. You know, my, this is my Unraid server, and it runs uh, Pi-hole and Unbound and, uh, you know, all, all that stuff. Um, you know, network-attached storage. Uh, I run ZoneMinder for my security cameras, so I just record 24-7 uh, video on it and everything. It, and it just, it deletes things that are older than a week. Because, you know, if you haven't figured it out by a week, just forget about it. Um, so this this is my main, my main vein right here. But uh, I'm really looking forward to getting the, uh, the Enterprise switch up here. Because then I'll have um, 24 SFP Plus ports. And the, uh, the 24 ports are also... Um, uh, PoE, which is really nice for the security cameras and things like that. And then um, I do uh, the previous owner of the house, which is why I have that stupid Netgear switch and and stuff. Uh, there's actually like a, a cutout in the wall between the studs for like one of those silly little like network cabinets, which is fine if you're just you know uh, just running like a computer upstairs or whatever and and Wi-Fi, but. Uh, it would get so hot you could never shut it. It had a it has a door you can shut on it. And I I can't even shut it because the network switches in there and stuff just get so hot. But uh, all the cable TV stuff and telephone stuff, which I don't even use, is in there. So it, it, it's kind of nice for just like a regular home user. But uh, obviously I'm not a regular home user, so I got a 36U, you know, uh, enterprise. It's actually an IBM brand rack, which uh, and and the other thing is, is it has those circle holes for the mounting, not those horrible square holes with those square nuts that make your fingers bleed. Those things are terrible. I do not understand why the industry standard is those square holes with those horrible square nut things. And I, I know they have tools and the plastic nuts and stuff now, but I, I don't even see why you would even need any of that with the circular holes. You just put a J nut over it and 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 screw. The, the mount screws into it and it's super easy and no bloody fingers and they're easy to remove uh, so I'm I, I, I'm really pleased with the uh, with the circle holes um, on the on the rack itself but uh, you know the previous owner did um, they did run uh, I think it's cat 5 or cat 5e um, network cable to each room and um, 
my office where my computer is and the printers and stuff like that, which are all network attached, um, is sort of in like a, it's not really a hallway cause it's a square room, but it connects a bunch of rooms together on the second floor and there's no, there's no networking port in there. So I have to run a cable from our bedroom over to our like entertainment center in our bedroom that we don't hardly ever use because, uh, I don't know what you do in your bedroom, but I don't watch TV in there. I do other stuff. Uh, but we do have a TV and a Roku and stuff in there. So I, I run from the network port over to the entertainment center where there's a, a, a little five port, you know, one gig switch. And then from there, I daisy chain another cable out of the bedroom and around the corner to where my desk and the, the printers are and stuff to another, like, I think eight port switch. And that, you know, it's also one gig and that has my computer and, and the printers and, and my test bench and all that on it. And so that's uh, obviously not ideal from a networking standpoint, but the way our house is made, it's extremely difficult to do cable runs um, because the first floor is all garage. And then the second floor is bedrooms and a bathroom. And the third floor is a, ba a bathroom, a bedroom, a uh, living room and kitchen. So man running, you know, I, I know how he did it. I can, I can see exactly how the guy who owned the house before me did it. He, he cut giant holes in the wall to get access. And I, I, you know, I live in a daycare and we, we can't have giant holes in the wall, uh, as, as the, uh, licensing people come to inspect and stuff. So you, you can't do that. So I won't be pulling any more cable. So I'm, I'm going to have to do some, uh, ghetto daisy chain networking stuff. If I want to get 10 gig in my office, but my wife's uh, computer where she does video editing and stuff is on the third floor. And um, I got one of those little five port Mikrotik um, switches for up there uh, that runs off PoE. So what I'll do is uh, get a SFP plus adapter for the um, the RJ45. Actually, I actually have them already, it came with it. I got it used, it was a pretty good deal as it came with the, the you know, the, the, the copper RJ45 adapters, which run pretty hot, but we'll just need one uh, to hook up that switch to the main run from the garage up there and then another adapter oh no from her computer to the micro tit switch will just be a dac because it's only like two meters or three meters maybe and i'll just run a dac there and then that five port micro tick switch is pretty cool because it has a one gig port on it uh that you can power it through with poe so i haven't since uh two of the security cameras are up there and they don't actually get terminated down here um I bought another uh, small, like five port, one gig switch that's PoE. So we can plug the two cameras in it and they'll be powered. And then we can also plug the 10 gig switch into it. And the 10 gig switch will get power from that too. So you only have one power adapter plugged into the wall. So that'll be, that'll work pretty good. Um, uh, the cameras right now, uh, when I, you know, when I bought the house, they were uh, older, like 480p cameras or whatever. They actually use video cables and um, so there's a power supply in our house uh, that run, that feeds 12 volts to all the camera stations. And once I can plug them into the switches with PoE, we won't have to have that power station uh, that converts 110 into, into 12 volts or whatever it is, or 24 volts, I forget. Uh, we won't have to have that anymore. And I don't know how much power it uses, but it's got like 150 uh, possible connections to it. And I'm only using four, so I'm sure it's, it's probably sucking down the juice. So it'll be nice to unplug that. Um, and then, uh, so yeah, anyway, I'm pretty excited. Uh, the enterprise switch, I think is supposed to be here tomorrow, which is Friday. And then the, uh, other little POE switch for upstairs should be here on, uh, on Monday. And then I can hook all that up and the enterprise, switch is going to take me a little bit cause I'm going to have to, um, you know, install licenses and configure the ports and do all that stuff. I may even try, uh, to do VLAN for the uh, security camera network, but I don't know if you can do that across like two different physical switches connected that are daisy chained together. I have, I have to I have to do some research on that and see if that's even like a thing or not, but uh, it's pretty exciting. It's nice to get some upgrades around here. So uh, I don't know why anybody bothers with those like Unify switches or the micro, micro tick stuff for, you know, above one G speeds. People are spending five, six, 700 bucks on switches this enterprise level switch that was a three thousand dollar switch that does uh, way more stuff than the those micro tick and unify switches it, it just does tons more stuff um it was only 160 bucks it's 24 port with poe you know i and it, I, you know it's got a 40 gigabit breakouts on the back of it too so if 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 for whatever reason the server needed a 40 gigabit nick I, I could hook that right up to it too and then run the rest of the network on 10 gig or whatever but uh 
that's uh, future, that's future Joe's problem. So anyway, pretty excited. I, I haven't done stuff like this in a while. I just, it was hard to get excited about stuff, but uh, stupid mining got my nerd on. So happy networking.